Hey everybody, this is Steli after with Kozao, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the journey from hot to cold leads and how most companies and most startups have a distorted view over what the response rate is going to be for certain lead lists that they've accumulated over the years and over time. So here's a problem I see again and again and again. Um, we think sometimes of the lead lists that we generate as kind of things that are static, right? So if, if we have a super hot lead list, let's say people that have signed up for a trial, used the product, really checked it out, but let's say they didn't convert to paying customers, we think that that's a super hot list, which it is. And we think that surely if we ping these people, if we email them or if we call them, we're gonna get much better response rates and reactions to that to those communication attempts than if we just research a cold list of leads and try to reach out to them for the very first time. Makes sense, right? Wrong. Because there's one component that really makes all the difference and that component is time. The, the I think mindset that we all have is that hotness um, is a state that you can't get out of anymore, right? So we think, yeah, these people have signed up for trials and were engaged. Yeah, maybe it was three months ago, maybe it was six months ago, maybe this lead list is a year old, but still, these are people that knew about our product, that came to our website, that signed up for a trial, that gave us the email address, that played with our product. They surely remember us, they surely know about us, they surely have a bigger need than if we just go out there and research a, you know, an email address and ping that person. And the answer is yes, but the difference or the key here to what is hot and what is cold is not just how you've gotten in possession with that email, but it's also kind of the, the journey and the timeline of that person, obviously, of that, that prospect. And the longer the time between them getting in touch with you and being hot to you re-engaging with them, the colder they get. This seems logical, right? And if you think about it, the branding and the naming of hot leads and cold leads is actually, <laughs> it gives it away, right? It if you think about anything that is hot or really warm, you know, over time, it goes colder and colder and colder. And the same thing is true for leads, but companies don't take that into account. I've seen this over and over and over again. Here's what happens. You know, I'll give you two, exa two examples that are super common and they've happened so many times that have now prompted me to decide to record this video and share this basic truth with all startups and all people out there and hopefully it's going to help you in future campaigns that you're running to plan with more realistic expectations. So uh, two common use cases. One is old lead lists of hot leads, right? So either what I um, mentioned earlier, there were, you know, expired trials, um, canceled customers, or, you know, th those are good, good, good lead lists in, in general. So a company will accumulate these kind of, you know, emails and phone numbers and contact information of customers that have, you know, either canceled or prospect that had an, a, a trial that expired. And once in a while, they think of these campaigns to run. Hey, we should do another campaign and try to go back to these older lead lists and try to win them back to do another trial or to purchase our product. And when they think of these lead lists, because they remember that, oh, this, these people were customers or these people were trial users, they think of them as warm leads. But as you see over here, the timeline really matters. And if if that list is older than, you know, typically six to 12 months, my expectation of what I've taught people and what I've seen over and over again is that you can't expect to have a conversion rate in your, in your campaign that is similar to a warm lead list. It, go, it is going to look a lot more like a completely new and cold email list. So get this, if you ping people that, that were expired trials and these people tried your product over 12 months ago, if you take a list of 100 of these people and if you research a new list of people, you know, that could be pro good prospects and if you email both of them or if you cold call or call both of these lists, the results you're gonna get, the conversion rates, first the reach rate, the conversion rate and the closing rate 
it's going to be fairly similar. Right, my most people I tell this to, they're mind blown because the expectation was that if they go back to a list that's over a year old of people that had signed up for a trial and they ping them, they're surely going to have conversion rates that look very similar to the current trials that are signing up that they're approaching in terms of reaching them, qualifying them, and closing them. That's just not true. A lead starts off hot if you know it come if somebody comes to you with high intent. Uh, to purchase somebody that's in the market, somebody that knows what you do, somebody that's committed enough to give you their email, their contact information, that in some cases even your, their credit card information to try your product or use your product. These people are hot leads, right? And they are absolutely different from somebody you cold email or cold call that has never heard of you and never cared. Absolutely. But that stage of being hot is going by like this very, very quickly. They'll move from hot to lukewarm within a week, a week or two on average, just to give you a benchmark. Like them signing up right now, they're hot seven days from now, lukewarm. Two weeks from now, very lukewarm, right? A month from now, that lead now is cold. I know it breaks your heart. It really does break my heart. But it is a cold lead now. And the way they will respond, the way they will react, you think surely they'll remember and eh, wrong. No, they won't. They might have signed up four or five weeks ago and when you call them, they don't, they don't have the slightest clue of who the hell you are. Right? They don't remember your company. They don't remember signing up. They might go, oh yeah, I did check out some stuff, but you know, they might not even remember why. I mean, it all depends. But a month is an eternity for a lead and they will move from hot, steaming hot, to cold within a few weeks. Most people underestimate how quickly a lead goes from one stage to the next if you haven't engaged with them. And then they go from cold to ice cold, you know, somewhere within the month to 12 month period. They go ice cold. Like a year from now, this lead is going to be so cold, you're going to have the same responses to that than researching a completely new lead that had never engaged with you in any way, shape, or form. I found that if you do a really good job in your lead gen, if you do a lot of research and make sure that the phone numbers and emails, the data quality is really high, and that you research that the prospect is really fitting your ideal customer profile, and if you do a little bit of social media research and you kind of get a sense that the timing could even be good, if you do really well research cold lead lists, they're going to behave very similarly to the lukewarm to cold leads that have just gotten a little you know, stale throughout the timeline, even if they came in steaming hot. right? So when you do these campaigns to older lists, you need to have realistic expectations on where they stand. Here's another example that I'll give you. Um, oftentimes, startups that have products that both individuals can use on a professional level as well as businesses, they'll amass this massive uh, lead list. And I just had this, uh, this uh, happen to me a few, two weeks ago where I talked to a founder. They have you know, over a million email lists, uh, emails, right? And they, so over a million people that sign up for their service and they have hundreds of thousands that are using their service. And a lot of these people, they use it individually. They use their productivity tool individually. And now they've developed a team part of the tool uh, that they want to sell to companies, not just to individual professionals. And what they want to do is they want to look through the professionals that have signed up with their professional email address, right? So let's say I'm, I'm Steli at WaltDisney.com, right? So they'll want to look at Steli at Walt Disney and try to approach me to sell, to find a way into Walt Disney as a larger enterprise customer and see if they can sell Walt Disney to purchase the, uh, you know, the productivity tool for a larger team or department. That's a great strategy and that has worked for many companies. Dropbox is one that comes to mind very easily. But the expectation again is that, well, these people are using my tool if I just email them or they had signed up for my tool if they email them, surely these are warm leads. Surely they're gonna react really, really responsively and, and openly and they're gonna be interested and engaged. I've seen this in three other startups before. I had data to look at, and the truth is they're not, right? Again, the behavior in terms of open rates, response rates, qualifying rates, 
are going to be very similar to a cold email list. It's heartbreaking, but it's true. Sometimes it's going to be a little, a little better and that's nice, but don't expect it to be dramatically better because oftentimes it just won't be. Now, what do we learn from this? One, uh, I want you to have realistic expectations. So when you plan these campaigns, when you pin your hopes on this next quarter campaign that's going to utilize this email list uh, of uh, old hot leads, there's no such thing. Maybe that's that's the, the quote of the day and of this video. There is no such thing as a, as a hot lead that's old. A hot lead that has signed up a long time ago. That doesn't exist. Right? It doesn't exist. If it has signed up a long time ago, it's now a cold lead. Right? You need to be in that mind frame when you do your campaign plan, planning. So that's one important thing, expectation. But the other side of it is prevention. Right? How do we prevent a hot steaming lead from going cold, from going ice cold? Well, obviously, there's just two ways to do that. One is speed to contact. Right? You want to be the moment somebody get, wants to get in touch with you, you want to get in touch with them immediately, start a conversation, start talking to them, start building a relationship with them. That's why we've written about calling sign-up trials within five minutes of, of the sign-up. And we'll link to that video and that blog post here, right? If somebody signs up on your website, gives you their phone number, their email address to trial your product. You want to call them within five minutes. Your reach rates are going to be a hundred times better when you call them within five minutes than if you call them an hour later. A hundred times better. This is actually university research. This is not even my numbers, right? This is crazy. So you will want to tell me that when somebody gives, it's the same person that give me their email and their phone number and they sign up right now. If I call them within five minutes or one hour, is that really that big of a difference? It's within an hour of them signing up. It's a hundred X difference. Just to give you an idea of how quickly a steaming hot lead goes lukewarm, goes from steaming hot to hot to lukewarm to somewhat cold to ice cold. It happens very quickly. So one way to prevent that from happening is get in touch with people in a turnaround time that's very, very fucking fast. Quick. You want to get in touch with them immediately if possible, both via phone, via email, via chat, via SMS, whatever communication channels you have available to you. You want to get in touch and start a conversation as quickly as possible. Start building a relationship. Start qualifying, understanding their needs and seeing if you can help them accomplish their ultimate goals and create value for them. That's step number one. And the step number two, so one is, uh, you know, prevention. The other one is to, you know, stay in touch with them, you know, frequently to never completely disengage with the lead. This is another thing startups love to do is they do all these big, we do all these big campaigns, marketing campaigns, PR campaigns, ad campaigns. We go to conferences and collect, you know, business cards or whatever the hell we do. And then we blast them out with one messaging and then we get whatever results we get and then we forget about the fucking list. And then a year later we remember and we go, oh, let's do another blast. That's not the way to go. Once, you, once somebody has given you their contact information, try to nurture that relationship forever. Take a 5, 10, 20 year approach to it if you can, right? Think about how can I get in touch with these people and stay in touch every two, every three, every four weeks, the latest, ideally every week, once with something valuable. Don't just spam them. Don't just send them emails that provide no value. Send them valuable information. Get into help them, right? What we do is we invest an incredible amount of effort and energy and time and money in creating compelling, valuable content, teaching companies how to do sales better. A lot of salespeople sign up uh, for our product and then they'll hear from us once a week where we give them a piece of advice, we share with them a tactic, we share with them some numbers that might help them, a template, we gift them books, we give them a little bit of value every single week to, to keep the lead from going from hot steaming to ice cold. We never want any lead to go ice cold because a lot of the people that come and find uh, clothes in the first step in the relationship they'll read our content and engage with us for six to nine months before they actually sign up for a trial and buy our product. But we do have customers, many of them, that will tell us consistently, I love your content. I love how valuable, how helpful you've been over the months, weeks and months since I've discovered your company. And so I'm recommending it to lots of people. And the moment that our company is back in the market to buy 
a CRM system, you're the first address we're going to check out, right? Because we never let them go cold. We stay in a dialogue with them. We stay in a conversation with them. We keep providing value to them and offering them help. And we keep engaging them on a weekly basis, you know, until the time is right to re-engage and sell them again on giving our product another chance. So please keep those two tactics in mind. Please keep in mind that a hot lead does not stay hot just because they've been in that column at one point in time. It goes very quickly from hot to cold, you know, in a matter of, in some cases, minutes, hours, days, weeks, but you have to have that mind, mind frame. So everything your company, your sales process needs to be evolved around turnaround time, engaging with them really, really quickly to prevent them from going hot to cold. And then, you know, once they've gotten, you're not going to be able to keep every hot lead a hot lead. Some of them will not qualify. Some of them will decide to go with another provider. That's fine. But what you want to do is you want to slow down the process from hot lead to ice cold lead. You want to stretch it by keep engaging with them for as long as possible. But then when you do new campaigns with those lead lists, have realistic expectations in terms of what the return is. Um, you can't expect these people to be hot a year after they sign up for your trial. You think they should remember you, that you think they should remember you beautiful and amazing product, but they won't. All right, I hope this was useful and, and valuable. Make sure that if you haven't yet done that to go to blog.close.io and subscribe to our blog. And if you have any questions, feedback, or anything else you want to share or help you need uh, from me directly, just shoot me an email at stelly at close.io. Always happy and excited to hear from you. Until next time, let's go and get them.